Wow, what a smell. It's ridiculous how soaked in wine my oldest son's wife is. She's giving me devilish looks and making fun of me while I'm stuck in bed with a fever. Can you believe she actually poured wine on me while I'm sick? Her cruel words and actions really hurt. We'll be going home soon, and she tells me to clean up before we return. She's so arrogant, it makes me wonder if she's possessed. But honestly, this isn't new behavior from her. Ever since we started living together, she's treated me like an outsider and played mean tricks on me. Even my son joins in on her teasing, laughing at me. I can't help but wonder how he turned out like this. But I try not to let it bother me. When she tells me to clean up, I can't argue back because of my fever. I reluctantly agree, but inside I'm boiling with anger. Chat GPT. I couldn't forgive my oldest son and his wife anymore. My name's Mary, and I'm a 71-year-old homemaker. My husband Bob is a farmer, a bit quiet but caring. We've built a good life together. But things got complicated when my eldest son John, who's turning 42, brought home his wife Catherine last year. Catherine, 40, works at a nightclub and dresses flashy. She and John, who's still bouncing between part-time jobs, seem suited for each other. My other son James, 38, is single and works in an office. Unlike John, James is gentle and kind. Living with John and Catherine isn't easy, despite my peaceful life as a homemaker. I sometimes worry that James might not be popular with girls because he's so kind. But that's also one of his charms, so I hope he stays that way. Having two children should make life smooth sailing, but things changed when my eldest son and his wife came into the picture. It all started a year ago when John's wife, Catherine, visited our house for the first time. My husband was out with the neighboring farmers, leaving me alone at home. John hadn't mentioned getting married, so I was shocked when he announced he was bringing his girlfriend home, who turned out to be his wife already. I was speechless and scolded him for not informing us beforehand. But he dismissed me, saying he didn't need to consult us for everything. His condescending attitude made me feel belittled. Chat GPT, I couldn't help but wonder where I went wrong in raising him. I've parented both John and James similarly, so it's surprising how different they turned out. But now, I just wanted John to sort out his life. I didn't even know how to greet his wife's parents anymore. His nonchalant response slightly annoyed me, but I held back my anger, arguing would it solve anything. Later, when John's wife came over, she immediately commented on our cramped house. It's true, our house isn't spacious. We bought it secondhand 35 years ago, did some remodeling, and made it our home, even though all our friends were building new houses. Our house did look a bit dated compared to others, and its old-fashioned architecture was apparent. But I loved it nonetheless. Thanks to my husband's hard work, we were able to buy this cozy home, even if it wasn't our dream house. We made adjustments during remodeling, keeping our lifestyle in mind. Despite this, John's wife mocked our home the moment she stepped inside. I couldn't believe her nerve. It's shabby and cramped, not cozy enough, she said. Even John, who had lived here until 15 years ago, joined in her laughter. He's renting an apartment now. But doesn't he have fond memories of this house too? This surprised me, but I guess it's fitting for an old lady like you. She had just met me for the first time but glared at me and made snide remarks. I was flabbergasted. Not only did she mock our house, but she even spoke ill of her mother-in-law. I'm sorry our house is so small, I apologize, but the time after that was hell. I was so shocked by her words that I could barely serve tea or sweets, and the couple just stared at me in disbelief. Hey, at least be prepared to welcome us, John said. Poor Catherine, you gotta welcome her with love. Then she made another jab, asking if I was a newbie waitress. I endured the scene, trying to block out Catherine's laughter. After that, I decided I never wanted this daughter-in-law to set foot in our house again. I prayed for him never to bring her over again, but my prayer was never heard. About half a year ago, John called me with bad news. Starting next week, Catherine and I will be living with you. I was shocked. Okay, live together. Why? Why now? I couldn't comprehend what John was saying. I was totally against living together with them. People always talk about mother-in-law and daughter-in-law issues, and I bet John's wife would hate to live together too. Above all, I didn't think I could live a normal life with her. I don't want you guys to move in here. I don't want any problems. Anyway, has Catherine agreed to this? John replied. Catherine says she's just fine with it. I got an okay from her yesterday, so we'll be moving in next week. Before I could reply, the call ended. From next week, John and his wife are moving in here. I shivered at the thought. That night, 
I decided to discuss it with my husband. I don't see a problem with it. I'm fine as long as Catherine is fine with it. They can help with living expenses after all. My husband, oblivious to Catherine's personality, was okay with them living with us. Our daughter-in-law herself said she's fine with it, so I understand why my husband isn't opposed to all this. But the problem is that our daughter-in-law can be rather insensitive. If my husband is fine with it, then I guess it can't be helped. It's our son's request after all. I couldn't quite turn him away, so I told him that we agree to let them move in, but in return, they must contribute to our household expenses. Got it, yeah, yeah, I know, was John's nonchalant response, leaving me wondering. If he's already in his forties I shouldn't have trouble having him pay for our expenses. So, half a year ago, my eldest son and his wife moved in with us. At first, contrary to my fears, both of them were quiet and kept to themselves. I was frustrated by how they barely helped around the house. But seeing my son go to work during the day and his wife doing the same at night, I refrained from meddling. However, both of them were living on opposite schedules and I wondered how they managed to keep their marriage going. But it wasn't my place to pry into their business. While they stayed with us, the couple hardly ever talked to my husband. Given their work schedules and lifestyle differences, it was somewhat understandable. And my husband never took the initiative to strike up a conversation either. And like that, the first month passed without any major issues. It was around that time that I approached my son about our living expenses. Living expenses. You can't seriously think I have that kind of money. What he said was different from what we had agreed on before. I was taken aback. Why should Catherine and I have to pay you? You don't have a mortgage to pay off, so don't be so stingy with that, John said as he left for his part-time job. Oh God, even though I had my doubts about living together, I reluctantly agreed, only under the condition that they would help out with our living expenses. But not contributing even a cent was unacceptable. I told the same thing to Catherine, but her response was, ha, huh, get the money from John. She didn't take me seriously either. I finally realized I had been played by my son and his wife. From there, things only got worse. Perhaps because they were annoyed by me being a housewife, they started making snide remarks at me whenever they got the chance. Must be nice being old, you can live freely on your pension without having to work, they'd say. That's right, you should at least do your laundry since you're not working. They believed that since I was a housewife, I should do all the chores, but they wouldn't contribute to our living expenses. Their comments were absurd. I tried to avoid their complaints as much as possible and endured their behavior. To make matters worse, they would always bully me when my husband was not around. They knew that I'm getting old and I don't have the energy or the will to fight back. When will this old hag leave? It'd be better without her around, they'd say. Even Catherine, who used to mock this house for being small, was making comments. Their bullying didn't stop at verbal abuse. Hey, what's with this new shelf? I replaced that old shabby dresser. To my astonishment, they had thrown away our family heirlooms and replaced them with new furniture while I was out. Even worse, they'd chosen flashy foreign-style furnishings that didn't match her aesthetic in the slightest. Oh no, my mother's mementos, I fell into a state of despair when I saw that they had even thrown out my cherished dresser and the chess I had inherited from my mother. Why would you throw away other stuff without even asking? I lost my temper at this point and raised my voice in anger, but they were unbothered. It's no big deal. What's the point in holding onto mementos with every change of furniture? I was overwhelmed by the horrifying feeling that my home was being taken over. What made me even angrier was that they didn't contribute to the household expenses at all, yet they had the money to buy furniture. My husband was busy with work and didn't have time to worry about what was going on at home so he just watched John and Catherine in silence. This is our home too, so we can do whatever we want, right? Catherine said smugly. As these incidents piled up, I felt mentally drained. Then, as if to add insult to injury, my husband collapsed from overwork just a month ago. He needs to rest for a while. The doctor said, I felt guilty for not noticing my husband's exhaustion because I was too busy dealing with John and his wife. I'm sorry, Mary, no. I'm sorry I didn't notice. You need rest, honey. I'll be back as soon as possible, my husband said. But his condition didn't improve much, and a month has passed since then. As expected, the harassment from John and his wife worsened while my husband was away. They broke dishes, pushed me from behind, and made me fall. It was blatant physical abuse, but I was too worried about my husband to think about myself. And then the day finally came. 
I was doing laundry as usual in the morning when I began to feel feverish and my head felt slightly painful. I measured my temperature just in case and it was 99 and a half degrees Fahrenheit, a mild fever. I was taken aback because I hadn't had a fever in years. I was probably worn out from everything I was going through. I was afraid I might faint if I continued working while standing, so I laid down on the couch in the living room. I should be fine in a few minutes since my son and his wife were still asleep. I thought no one would complain about me lying down for a bit. However, the living room door opened, and John and his wife entered with large suitcases. Mom, what are you doing there? Hurry up and do the laundry. Wow, she's so lazy for a full-time housewife, pathetic Catherine remarked. Well, I just have a slight fever today. I'll get up as soon as I rest for a bit, so wait. No, we can't wait, we're about to go out. Indeed, I could guess from their large luggage that they were about to go somewhere. We're going to visit my parents' house. Oh, I see. Safe travels. Before you go, could you bring me some water? My throat is all dry, I requested, feeling relieved when I heard that they were going to visit Catherine's parents. I asked them to bring me some water, hoping they would do at least that much. Ha! Huh, do it yourself, Catherine muttered under her breath. Well, fine, I'll bring it to you, she conceded begrudgingly. Catherine disappeared into the kitchen for a while, and out of the blue, something splashed on my face. I was left speechless. You reek so funny, all covered in wine, Catherine said with the eyes of a demon, bursting into loud laughter. She had splashed wine on me while I was laying down, sick with my consciousness fading. Her heartless words and deeds pierced my heart. We're going back home now, so finish all the chores by the time we get back. Don't leave a speck of dust, she ordered harshly. I was convinced that she was possessed by a devil. Well, that's lame, Catherine. You were so mean. I said, even though my eldest son joined in on his wife's behavior, clapping his hands and bursting into laughter behind her. How did he end up like this? He's not my child anymore. Now I'm sure of it, I thought. No problem, this is nothing. So you're gonna clean the house, right? Not like you have any choice anyway, Catherine sneered down at me. Ew, is all she said. Yes, I'll do the cleaning, I replied, unable to fight against her, biting my lips. The house better be clean by the time you get back. When we returned, I was down with a fever, so I reluctantly agreed to her demands. But deep down, my blood was boiling with anger. I couldn't forgive my eldest son and his wife anymore. Catherine, who had splashed wine on my face, hastily left the house with John. The bitter frustration and the smell of strong wine made me grimace. But my condition only worsened as time passed. I couldn't even get up to wash my face, lying down, unable to do anything right. When my consciousness began to fade, I heard the front door open. I'm home, the familiar voice made me open my eyes in surprise. Honey, Mary, what happened? My husband, seeing me lying weakly on the sofa, immediately rushed over to me. What is this smell? Did something happen? Catherine and John did this to me. Upon seeing my beloved husband's face, suddenly I couldn't contain my emotions and I confessed everything that the two had been doing to me. It had been a while since the last time I saw my husband, and in the middle of it all, I could have pulled back my tears and started crying like a child. I see. I'm sorry you never noticed. No, I'm sorry for not telling you properly. But why did you come back? I asked. The doctor told me I could go home because my condition has improved. I wanted to see you as soon as possible, he explained. I see. Thank you, honey, I said gratefully. After that, my husband gently wiped my wine-soaked face with a damp towel and carried me to the bed. He tucked me under a warm blanket and even prepared a light meal and a drink that was easy on my stomach, which brought tears to my eyes. I can't stand it anymore. Although they are our son and his wife, I can't tolerate them anymore. They don't contribute to the household expenses, and on top of that, they're just awful, I confessed. You're right. After hearing about all they did, I completely understand you. We can't live in this house anymore. My husband agreed, equally enraged. We contemplated how to fight back against John and his wife. Aguilie, we'd like to kick them out of this house, but they wouldn't just leave because we asked them to, so we had no other choice. But to take a different approach, to put it bluntly, our plan was a forceful operation. It was something we had been slowly putting into action, and finally, the time had come for us to execute it. Surely, it would be a very effective strategy against them, who had constantly ridiculed me in my home. I met my husband's eyes and nodded. It's showtime. Over the course of several weeks, we carried out our plan, and things had finally settled. 
One day, we were relaxing on our living room sofa when my phone rang. It was from John. I chuckled. Finally, the moment had come. Swallowing hard, I answered the phone, trying to calm my pounding heart. Hey, you old hag, what the hell is going on here? Startled by the sudden barrage of abuse from the other end of the phone, I instinctively pulled the phone away from my ear. Well, what's the matter? Aren't you at Catherine's parents' place? John's frantic voice was amusing to me, and I struggled to hold back my laughter. You remember how Catherine told me to leave the house clean by the time you guys got back? So we did. We cleaned the whole house, not a speck of dust left, right? Yes, I took Catherine's word and used it against them. We sold the house and moved out, leaving nothing behind, I explained. It was something we had been considering ever since my husband collapsed from fatigue. We were getting older, farming is labor-demanding. We considered giving it up and living out our retirement years in peace. I thought my workaholic husband would oppose the idea, but he was so affected by his collapse that he readily agreed to my suggestion. We always had inquiries about having our land for sale so we were able to sell it with no problem. Things moved quickly after that, and before we knew it, our house was completely gone. We loved our previous house, but it was much easier for us to sell it off than to plan about who to pass it down to. We moved to a rental apartment in the neighboring state. We thought it would be hard to take out a mortgage for a house at our age, so we agreed that a rental would be fine. And now I'm on the phone with John from our new home. What the hell did you do? Do you think you can get away with this? What are we supposed to do now? Hearing the yelling from the other end of the line, I couldn't help but sigh. What the hell did I do? You guys are the ones who ruined everything for us. What are you saying? Barging into someone else's home and making a mess, not contributing to the household expenses, bullying an old woman like me. Was it fun? Call me every name under the sun. I don't care, I retorted. Damn it. John grunted in anger, and I couldn't help but chuckle. They probably never imagined the house would be gone. Just the thought of them standing in front of an empty lot, dumbfounded, was cracking me up. Mom, what the hell did you do? John passed the phone to his wife. I remembered her smug smile when she poured wine on me and felt nauseous. It's my house and I'll do as I please. It's none of your business, Catherine retorted. It is totally my business. We lived here too. It's our home as well, I countered. Ha, our home? You never helped around the house or paid any bills. How do you claim it is your place? Besides, I know something about you, Catherine. What, you quit your job a while ago, didn't you? Or were you fired? Either way, it doesn't really matter. You leave home every night, saying you're heading to work. What have you been doing exactly? I, that's, you're cheating, aren't you? Want me to tell John about this? I confronted her. What did you say? Catherine didn't deny it, so I guess I was right. I had a hunch that Catherine had been cheating for several months now. She came home from work at odd hours every day, and I started to notice a peculiar smell of perfume on her laundry that she never wore before. She might be able to fool my stupid son, but she can't fool me. You can't just run away when things get tough after all the things you did to us. Get out of my place right now, I demanded. Fine, I get it. There's no way I can live in this dump anyway, Catherine replied with a rustling sound as she seemed to be leaving the lot. Hey, where are you going? John's confused voice echoed. He had no idea he was being cheated on. When Catherine left, he took out all of his anger on me. Old hag, what the hell did you say to Catherine? I only told her I would spill the beans about her affair to you, I confessed. The way my John fell apart after that was terrible. Unable to accept the reality, he cursed and shouted harsh words like, why the hell? Then he started yelling at me, how could you do this to me? I'm your son for God's sake. You took it too far. After all the things he did, my son was still trying to play the victim. I started to feel bad for him. He's so pathetic but that doesn't mean I'm ever going to live with him again. My son, you are no longer my son. Oh, and one more thing, your phone contract is about to end soon, so this really is our goodbye, huh? My son couldn't even breathe right and just gawked. I had canceled my son's phone contract, which he had made me pay since he moved in. The contract ends this month, but today is already the last day of the month. From tomorrow, my son's phone will be useless. Now I can finally cut ties with you. Goodbye. Without waiting for a reply, I hung up the phone. I felt all the energy drain out of me in an instant, and I slumped onto the sofa. My husband said, good job, and brought me a warm cup of tea. Finally, I can sever ties with my eldest son, 
Just thinking about it seemed to heal all the hardships I had gone through. A week later, our intercom rang. I went up to check the intercom screen and saw my second son. Hey mom, it's been a while. Well, if it isn't James, so nice of you to visit us. Come in, I invited warmly. As I reached to press the open button for the door, a gruff voice suddenly commanded, Move it. I finally found you, you old hack. Open up now. To my surprise, John popped up, even though we never gave him our address. I wondered if he hired a detective or something. Open up. I bet you're just here to try and steal some money. Just leave right now. Ha, huh, keep talking like that, and we'll see what will happen to this guy, John threatened, taking out a blade that looked like a knife from his pocket. The sight made me shriek in fright, but I was more worried about James being in danger. I needed to do something quickly. Bro, what are you doing? You've been looking down on me, an office worker. You said you make me sick. Bro, aren't you ashamed of yourself leeching off mom and dad's money, living like a parasite? You son of a, James's words were cut short by the imminent danger. Oh no, James is in trouble. Just when I blanked out in fear, I heard the blaring siren of a police car followed by the sound of heavy boots approaching. We're arresting you for attempted murder. Come with us. Hey, wait, what the hell? Through the screen, I saw John get taken down by the police with his knife still in his hands. That's as far as I saw. I'm guessing that the neighbors called the cops after hearing the commotion at our place. According to James, his brother had a crazed look in his eyes, barely recognizable as his brother he once knew. Mom, sorry it's late, but I'm getting married. Oh really? Congratulations. Thank you. Receiving such joyous news from James, my husband and I were overwhelmed with happiness, and we celebrated the occasion by having a feast with him. I am more satisfied with just this child. Our eldest son can live his own separate life. My husband also seemed relieved that we were finally free of him. After that, John was taken by the police, and it was discovered that he had committed other crimes like theft and intimidation. The duration of his imprisonment is yet to be decided. Of course, he lost his part-time job. I felt profound sadness, wondering where I went wrong in raising a child who would resort to such crimes. Even though Catherine went back to her parents' home, it seems her irresponsible lifestyle hadn't changed, and I heard rumors that she was kicked out of there too. Turns out that a man she was having an affair with was married with kids, and now she's being sued by his wife. It's a disaster for her, but it's karma. Of course John and Catherine had gotten divorced. I have stopped thinking about John and I'm moving on, heading toward a new future in our new home. Mom, this is Rachel. She works as a pharmacist at a pharmacy near my workplace. Hello, mother-in-law. Nice to meet you, Rachel. Nice to meet you, too. The fiancé James brought home Rachel was a 32-year-old woman, polite, intelligent, and instantly likable. It's going to get busy, isn't it? But I'm looking forward to it. James, Rachel, my husband, and I all had dinner together, sharing laughter. One day, we'll gather around the table together again with our grandchild. Just imagining it was a beautiful scene. 